Cancer, we got a big week. We do, because there's a new moon, and it's a powerful new moon. A lot of these new moon full moons have had extra power bursts in them, but when it's conjunct to Pluto, you better believe it. This is gonna be something explosive and definitely dynamically changing your situation. So let's get into it. Cancer, this is your weekly tarot card reading and astrology summary from Born Without Boundaries Tarot. Welcome to Born Without Boundaries Tarot. My name is Michelle. For those of you who are just clicking on my videos, thank you for giving the videos a chance. For those of you who are returning, God bless you for helping the channel to grow. Remember, there's always an extended video that I do hope you'll join me for, and the links are all over the place, including at the very end of this video, around 18 minutes in, you could just click on the link and go right there. I'll pin it to the top of the comment section. I will pin it to the top of the description box. This is your reading. So please take the energies that I describe where they resonate in your life. And you might wanna try your moon sign, especially as Cancerians. You should always be watching your moon sign video because your moon sign is gonna dictate how your sun sign experiences life. So please always watch your moon sign video and maybe check out your rising sign video too because sometimes they just relate more to where you're at in life right now. Um, if you really love my content, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you know when I upload your favorite content. I do 12 videos every single week, so I know there's a message for you here. And I have a second YouTube channel called Astrology Motivation, where every weekday I go live and I do a live tarot reading, astrology chit chat that is just really wonderful. And I would love to hear your voice. Please leave comments below throughout this video. I will be reading as many of them as I can. So I have a card in front of me and it once again plays in with the astrology so we're going to get into the astrology i've written down a few things now i want to draw your attention first to cancer threes so late season cancerians definitely around you know if you were born like the 22nd like between the 18th and the 22nd pluto has been sitting opposite your natal sun and this is some shit. i'll tell you that right now it's big energy so if you have gotten a lot of change and and uh, not just change, but people confronting you about or anger coming out or frustration or upset coming out where people are pointing out to you how they how they felt you've manipulated them, how the how hurt they've been by your behavior toward them um, um, or just getting in your face about certain personality traits or habits that you have that have been very, become very destructive or have been destructive in the past, that's why it's happening. And I can tell you right now that especially for you guys, this moon is gonna be a chance to start over and reestablish yourself, especially socially, because the new moon is in Aquarius, but it's at the very first degrees of Aquarius, which means it's still in conjunction with Pluto and still running in opposition to your natal sun. So this is definitely the time to see the truth, accept the truth, and start over. But this is definitely what I would summarize as, you know, calling people's bullshit moment. And when Pluto is opposite your natal sun, that's basically what's happening. If there's toxicity that you've been a part of generating, it's coming back at you and you're being asked to atone for it. So whether or not you realize that or realize that that's why this stuff is happening, now you can. And I think that that will become very clear to you. And it also a sense of, especially around that new moon, a chance to wipe the slate clean. Now, in terms of cancers in general, the moon always impacts you a great deal. And this moon is in Aquarius, which means the best way to celebrate manifestation on this new moon is to think of others and do something that serves your community or a wider audience, not yourself but think of others. And that's a real good way to develop some real good karma on this new moon, a new beginning, a new start. And it could also mean a new beginning and a new start with how people see you and how society reacts to you or how your society sees you socially could be a complete and total change. Change for the better, change for the worse. That's all a matter of perspective and how you think of those terms. 
and what's going on in your life at that time. But definitely a key to manifesting in an Aquarius moon is to work on manifesting something that's good for all of us or good for everyone around you instead of something that's just good for you. That's a real beautiful way to work with Aquarian energy in the purest form that'll have the best impact on you, your karma, and of course, your community. So let's get into the cards and only one card has come out. And this is why I flipped out. We have the page of wands, which to me, overwhelmingly in all my readings represents a new start, a new beginning, a fresh start, a new passion for something. You've never tried it before, but you have an inkling. Um, and also just the sense of accepting I'm new here, but I'm fresh here. And this is exactly where I want to be. Like having an optimistic perspective on being the lowest person on the totem pole simply because something is new and something is exciting. Overall, a new beginning, a new passion, okay? And optimism. This is a very optimistic energy. What is this with regards to? We're gonna get deeper into this. Let's, oh, the cards are coming out. This is not gonna be an easy week, Cancerians, but it is going to be a powerful week. Remember that this week also includes a moon conjunction with Pluto. And for those of you at the last degrees of Capricorn, you're gonna experience that before the new moon that continues this conjunction with Pluto. So there is dynamic change rupturing in your life right now. Here we have seven of pentacles, which means that you may have passion for something, but some, why, there's a reason why you keep failing at it. Like, why do you keep failing? Why do you keep going over and over and over, but get nowhere? It's like you're circling the drain, but nothing ever actually happens. There seems to be just a cluelessness as to why you keep failing at something, okay? Temperance is here, which means there is an angel or is a blessing that kind of works things out. There is a dynamic change but what does what does Sagittarius energy represent it represents zooming out and looking at things from a larger perspective because I think part of the reason why there is um confusion or you're not understanding why things aren't moving forward is because you do have to zoom out you're looking at things that are too small and you need to look on a large scale of what's going on so instead of you know, dipping into those analytics and trying to analyze the data. Instead, analyze the social dynamic of what's going on and, and look, zoom out and look at the bigger perspective as well as the philosophical perspective of things. We have the sun card here. So this is also very beautiful, dynamic energy, a big breakthrough, happiness, success, and abundance, but it's also a spotlight. So overall, what you could experience this week is a dynamic change to failed attempts at something. A dynamic change. Now, what would be the dynamic change from a failed attempt at something? Well, first of all, it's not just the universe comes and saves me and finally opens up everything I wanted. No, first there has to be a change in you that catalyzes that door opening. And the door is only going to open if you realize I am a newbie here. I need to start small. There's a lot I still have to learn. And if you assume that perspective instead of the perspective of I'm going to dominate, I'm going to have it because I want it. With the sun opposite Pluto, if you have this in your natal chart, it's, it, it can be very manipulative energy. It can be, I want it, I'm addicted to it, I'll be ruthless to get it, but it doesn't mean I actually deserve it. And that's gonna create some real bad tension. So this is about humility and being willing to start from scratch and from just step one. <laughs> and you'll be surprised, and most, some of you are so afraid to do that because you're like, I don't wanna lose my ground. You don't have any ground. That's the problem, you don't see it. You've got to admit, I'm brand new here. I got to start from scratch and then watch how the world opens up, right? Watch how the transformation starts to happen where there's a sense of joy. There's a sense of happiness and enjoyment in what you do again. And there's also a sense of opportunity and success that will take everything you have done 
and move it to the forefront and get the attention. It's like, it's like what you need to get the attention you want is exactly the thing that you don't want to do. So you're pulling away from your abundance instead of having heading toward it. Now we have a, a card in the past. This is some heavy criticism. This is also some misguidance. This is also some bullshit and criticism and something, somebody that was very mean or very cruel or intentionally destructive. Now, this could also be, it's usually an, it's usually an air sign, but it may just be your brain and how your brain has been talking to you or saying things to you or, um, these are about cutting words, words that are intentionally spoken to hurt. So it's almost like, I don't know, it's like the realization of this, the confrontation and the acceptance of that actually leads to a great deal of happiness and a great deal of connection that this disconnected you from. I don't know who this is. This could be a feminine air sign, usually over the age of 30, somebody who is extremely critical and intentionally derogatory. This is in reverse. The Queen of Swords is not normally like that. In reverse, it represents a very malefic energy, somebody who is really driven to degrade others. I can just put it that way. Let's pull a moon card. I feel like we've just scratched the surface. Don't let pride get in your way. A time to give rather than take. And what did I say? And emotions are running high. At a time when you feel you most need to cling on and hold to, but I want that. Give me that. I deserve that. And 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 mine. And no, 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 no. You can't talk to me this way. That's pride. Open yourself up. Let them say what they need to say. Understand that their words are about them, not about you. So there's no reason for you to not listen. And if it is about something that you've done, own it. You know, I'm sure you've experienced this. This is the energy of a person who basically, if you go to them and you tell them, you really hurt me. Their response will always be, that was just your interpretation of what I said. Or why would I hurt you? The only reason I would hurt you is because you don't have confidence in your, yourself and that's not my problem. So this is the energy of a person who is too prideful to take a second to actually hear somebody else's heart because they're scared about what's in their own. So if you have been this kind of person, you're gonna be called out on your shit this week. And if you are dealing with this kind of person, you are gonna call them out on their shit this week. And you're going to respectfully and gratefully decline any more shit. That's what's gonna happen because it's gonna become very clear to you that this kind of thing is not something that you should tolerate. And it absolutely does have to do with them, not about you. And you know, there, this is the kind of energy of a person who will th use emotions to shut you down. And I got to call you out on some of this because this, that's, a that's a very low vibrate or disharmonious Cancerian modality of I'm going to throw my emotions at you to shut you down so that you don't make me feel or make me take responsibility for anything that I did to you. Just, just somebody who cries as soon as you tell them that they've upset you so that they can then turn around and make it all about them. This is very emotionally manipulative energy and I'm describing a lot of cancers to a lot of people right now. So you can't not own it. 
And this moon is about, don't let pride get in your way. Open yourself up and listen and, and be like, if I've hurt you, clearly I've hurt you. <laughs> and I am so sorry. Is there anything that I can do? Or, or just listen, maybe just listen and own and understand and think to yourself, why do I not want to hear this? Why am I so reactionary? What is it triggering in me? That means I have shit inside myself that I absolutely need to face that is self-destructive if I don't face it. A lot of people are going to pretend the other person is the problem when in reality it's the man in the mirror that's the problem. So that's what this energy is describing. Now also don't let pride get in your way. Don't let pride get in your way is about, you know, even if something has gone wrong in the past, doesn't mean you should hate it or insist. Maybe you walk away from it, right? But this is the kind of energy that usually comes out when it's just like, oh, you, hold on. Let me, let me explain it. I'm going to explain it. Um, I, you know, I've, I've been down that road with this person before. So, you know, I mean, okay, but what's the difference? I'm trying to give you a good example of like, what's the difference between learning and not going back and making the same mistake <laughs> or um, just basically shutting down an opportunity because you were upset that it didn't come through for you. Like, like say, say in business or in work, um, yeah, you know, just getting so sick of being turned down that you're kind of like, okay, well, I don't need that. That's pride. Especially since, because you still really want it on some level. But well, I don't need that because it's really defensive. You just don't want to be hurt by it again. And you're scared to look at maybe what you're doing and maybe just objectively fix things so that you don't have the same results. Instead, pride makes you shut down. And I'm not going to, no, I won't do that. So where is pride dominating and taking over your life and separating you from other people instead of allowing you to connect? And connection is the key to success. Emotions are running high. So this is going to be an emotional week where a lot is confronted. And yeah, you could absolutely be calling somebody else on, out on their shit too. Sure. Absolutely. Some of you will be. But a lot of this is about something that's very personal. It is about personal journey this week. especially for you end of the season Cancerians. We have the judgment card. What does that mean? It means that the good judgment is for things to be done and over with and to let them end and to be done with the pain and done with the sorrow and done with the suffering and to be open to hearing and facing the music and the pain and suffering that maybe you were a part of causing. Or making decisions that are going to finally allow you to realize something that you've kept on life support is over. Sometimes pride keeps us from feeling our emotions because we don't want to hurt. But the truth is something is over and you've been keeping it on life support. You keep fighting for something. Three of cups is in the past. Is something really worked out in the past? It, it, relationship to the past is that you know, at once, at one time, you know, everybody celebrated you. Everybody was really happy for you. There was, there was joy here. And so you kept fighting because you're looking for that feeling again, instead of allowing things to change. This is also about criticism or somebody getting in the way of people really believing in you. 
And that could be a manipulative tendency. That could be a character trait of your own, or it could be somebody sitting outside of yourself that is really kind of like de derogatory. Somebody who's derogatory. Let's look at these cards. Okay. Nine of Cups and Four of Wands. So taking the high ground, and it's not about defending yourself. It's doing the right thing. dreams and wishes coming true and people who really appreciate you. So there is definitely a dynamic change that's coming. And for those of you who own up to and accept your part in the bullshit, you help the situation, you help diffuse the situation. And that's the way the situation opens up to really work out for you. What is this? I just want to clarify the Ten of Swords before we move forward. There's a tower here. That's what the, the Ten of Swords is a tower. So that would be a real ending to something. Something completely coming down. Um, oh, damn. Um, six of Swords, not being able to escape or get out of it, or maybe because you... It's almost saying that if you are stuck in something and you refuse to move on from it, it's going to become a destructive factor in your life. You're forcing the universe to get in there and Pluto will be ruthless. It will clear it out. If you don't decide to move forward, it will clear it out for you. Ace of Wands is here. The whole intention of the universe is to make you start a new path and a new passion. Whatever that is. This may not be in your whole life, right? For some of you, this may be career. For others of you, this may be relationship. Queen of Wands is here. Could be a new, could be literally, word by word, a new start, new passion, new pathway with a fire sign. A feminine fire sign, somebody who's beautiful, somebody who's playful, somebody who's got a lot of charisma, and somebody who gets a lot of attention. Let's go to the extended because there's a lot more to say. I'll see you guys there.